And this week, we're going to do the most an ultra ultra popular <coughs> phrase that everybody's heard, and I would even used to say many years ago before it led me astray, and I had to figure out what the Word of God said. And if we'll put that up now. What? Follow your heart. Anybody ever had you told you, just follow your heart. Yeah. Just follow. Let me tell you, you follow your heart, and I'm just going to, what, what's the, uh, these are fake scripture verses, in case you didn't know that. So the fake scripture verse is what? That, that's the destruction. If you follow your heart, you're going to put yourself on a path of destruction. But my heart, God gives me the desires of my heart. Well, here's the kicker with God. He wants your desires to be the same as His. I'll go ahead and tell you this straight away. And your heart is supposed to be after His heart. Which I didn't throw that verse in because I had too many already as you're going to see. But how many have heard this? How many even received that advice from people? Just follow your heart. Or have you ever been talking to somebody and you're giving them a little scriptural advice? Well, I'm just following my heart. Well, we're going to look and see what the Bible has to say about that today. And what it doesn't say. Does that sound good to anybody? And uh, we're going to look at some of my favorite verses on it. So if you'll put up the first verse there, Sister Becky, is that... Numbers 15, 37 through 41, and it says, The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and bid them that they make them fringes in the borders of their garments throughout their generations, that they may put upon the fringe of their borders a ribbon of blue. Looks like a, looks like a, you get come across right. But I'm going to stop there. That ribbon of blue represents the word of God and so he told them you put a fringe on the bottom of the garment of a remnant of blue and it represents the word of God now the woman with the issue of blood where did she grab a hold of Jesus at hem of the hem of his garment which is where the fringes of blue was at so she literally grabbed a hold of the word of God wow okay so if you're going to, uh, uh, right off the bat, God's telling you, you need to grab a hold of the Word of God. Amen. Throughout this whole series, you're going to find everything grounded in the Word of God. And if you don't know the Word, you're going to be tossed to and fro, unstable in all your ways. Now, does that mean you just show up and be a Bible scholar one day and have the whole Bible memorized? No. No, it just means you start studying to show yourself approved. You are not in a race with anybody else. You're running your own race. You're in not competition with anybody else. You're just studying to show yourself approved so that you live your best life now. Okay? And it says, And it shall be unto you for a fringe that you may look upon it and remember all the commandments of the Lord, which is also the written word, and do them. So when you look at it, it's to remind you of the commandments of the Lord. Right? Remind you of the word of God. And it says, so, And that ye seek not after your own heart. Right out of the get-go, he said, You need to be looking at the word of God so you're not going after your own heart. Anybody getting anything right? So if you were to follow your own heart, you would already be contrary to the scripture, correct? And your own eyes, after which you used to go whoring. Strong words, not mine. That you may remember and do all the commandments and be holy unto your God. I mean, a holiness is still a real thing. Now, I cannot be perfect in my own strength. I can't be uh, good enough, but the Bible says in my weakness his strength is made perfect. And so when I do my best to, to line up with the word of God, then God empowers me to overcome. He puts a super to my natural. Amen. But how many know I wouldn't know I have I really don't know how much weakness I got until I start studying to show myself approved. Come on. So 
when you see the word of God, and I'm the Lord your God, which brought you out of the land of Egypt to be your God, I'm the Lord your God. So he's like, listen, I, I done took care of you once, I'll take care of you again, but you need to put the, and there's another scripture that says to, but it says to put the, as I, as these fringes as eyelets in front of your eyes so you're constantly remembering the word of God. So putting the word of God in is key to not following your own heart. We can see that right off the bat. Can we see that? Okay, next slide. John 14, 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. So, can your heart be troubled? Are you a weak kneed Christian if your heart's troubled? Are you some lack of faith, wimpy, good for nothing Christian as the devil tries to beat you up if something bothers your heart? No. But he said, you believe in God, believe also in me. So you're going to have to make a choice. Are you going to believe the Word of God? Because he said, believe in God, you believe in me, and Jesus is the Word, was the Word. We studied last week. So are you going to believe the Word of God? Or are you going to believe what's troubling your heart? Because if you believe what's troubling your heart, you're choosing to follow your heart. Come on, I'm preaching already this morning. So are you going to believe the Word of God? Or are you going to believe what's troubling your heart and follow your heart? You will always have something troubling your heart. You will always have something that just doesn't settle right that's causing you pause at the very least. Sometimes it'll be mighty be causing you heartache and pain. Anybody ever had something that you just were 100% sure it was one way and you followed your heart on it and it led you into a bigger mess? Don't raise your hand. But you know, someone's always asked, well, all I know, well, for one, I tell people follow the peace of God. Where the peace of God goes, you go. Well, how do you know what God says? Well, how do you know what God says on the subject? You find what he has to say in his, in his word. Well, I don't understand all of that. Well, you study to show yourself approved. You follow the peace. And for pity's sake, don't follow your own heart unless your heart is lined up with the word of God. And even then, you double check it with the Word of God. Anybody getting anything yet? Amen. All right, next verse. I may get done early today. What do y'all think about that? <laughs> Beat the Baptist to dinner since I'm preaching different. For the kickoff. Proverbs, I'm not making any promises. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with some of your heart the best you can. Is that what it says? Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. So that means I'm going to lean completely on what he says with all of my heart. If my heart's completely relying on him, there's not much room for my own influence in there, is there? And it's because right after that, someone said, I need some more scripture for that. And I'm so, so glad you asked. Because right after that, it says, and lean not to your own understanding. Has anybody in here other than me tried to figure stuff out on your own and made a mess of it and followed your own heart? Oh, yeah. How many know our ways, his ways aren't our ways, his thoughts aren't our thoughts, but his promises are sure. And if you line up with the Word of God, there's no more sure bet in all of history. I'm just telling you, you can, you can, you, there, there, there is great promises with God. There's great peace with God. There's great joy with God. But we have to stop leaning on our own understanding. For one, you're going to drive yourself crazy and everybody else crazy trying to figure it out. This morning we have lots of empty pews here. You know what I choose to focus on? That we're going to keep going and getting more people and filling these pews up because there's people that's lost and dying that's coming here. We'll pray for the ones that's not here. But you know what? I'm just a bus driver. I can't control who gets on and off the bus. I just got to keep driving the bus. 
whether I like it or not. <laughs> Lead not to your own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge Him. Who should you be pointing to in every area of your life? Jesus. Jesus. And then what does He say He will do? And He shall direct thy path. Now, I don't know which way to go, Pastor. Well, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not in your own understanding. Stop following your own heart. Pick up the word of God. Start following it even when you don't understand it. And then God promises to direct your paths. Not maybe, not coulda, not shoulda, not woulda. He says, I will direct thy paths. Now, I've said this a million times and I'm going to say it again. One of the greatest things I figured out was Jeremiah 29, 11. He says he has plans for me, not to harm me, but give me uh, to, to prosper me, give me a future and hope. I put you the scripture, but you get it. But the greatest thing I figured out was laying down my plans and picking up his plans. Amen. And that's part of learning to follow his heart and stop following mine. Come on. But do you believe that God's got good things for you? Or do you think he's just down here to use you and abuse you? John 10, 10 says the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We can't deny that. It's the world we live in. But if you focus on that, you're going to have a miserable existence. Because the next part of that verse says, I've come, you may have life and have it more abundantly. Amen. John 10, 10. Zoe kind of life. Amen. Joy, peace-filled kind of life. How do I have that? I keep my heart focused on Him. I line up with Him. I start running with the rhythm of grace. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of the rhythm of grace. That just, you know, I almost could feel a horse just gallop. Because that's what grace is like when you get when your heart gets lined up with it. Go dum, go dum, dum, dum. And man, there's nothing better than being in sync with the Lord and his heart. And you just start running that rhythm of grace that's empowering you to overcome. The dum, dum, the dum. <laughs> All right, next slide. We're moving. Jeremiah 17, 5, 10. Jeremiah 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Does anybody like to be cursed? No. Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 through 10. Thus says the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Does anybody... I, I have figured out no matter how much I love people, I, I can't. Maybe I can't trust men, but I can trust God, Amen. and I can trust God to deal with men. Amen. And maketh his flesh his arm, and whose heart departeth from the Lord. So, if your heart leads you away from God. I hate to break it to you, but you've just entered into a curse. Anybody want to do that? Yeah. Would anybody just raise your hand and volunteer for that wholeheartedly? Me, I want to be cursed from God today. Yay! <laughs> you know, Satan is not an idiot. He's not gonna, he knows you're not just going to raise your hand and volunteer. Therefore, he deceives you and leads you away and nibbles at you to get you to follow after things of your own heart that are contrary to the heart of God, <coughs> according to the Word of God. Come on, I'm still preaching this morning. For he shall be like the heath, heath, heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, but shall have it to parched places, in the wilderness and salt and shall not be inhabited. Okay, so you're just going to be like a, a piece of dried up shoe leather in the middle of the desert. It's going to starve to death wishing he had a drink of water. That sounds great to me. Not really. Anybody want some of that? No. I've got to get a drink. Yeah, all that talking about the desert, man. But we're going to talk about the good stuff next. That's it. How many know God? See, you got to address both sides. But God never leaves you going, oh man, I don't want to be that. He always leaves you on the good side. But he always leaves you with a choice, right? 
Today we're talking about how stupid it is to follow your own heart if I can just be quaint. Okay? And for the record, there's not anybody in this room today that hasn't followed their own heart. And maybe some of you have realized the circumstances, or maybe some of you are just starting to really realize why things turned out the way they did, or maybe you're getting a fresh revelation on it. <coughs> Amen? Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord. So whenever you believe the Bible over your own heart, what man tells you, what everything else looks like, he said you will be blessed. And whose hope the Lord is. When I write, you know, hope, that word hope there means confidently anticipating the promises of God are yes and amen. Yes. I'm going to say it one more time. For, it means that I'm confidently anticipating that the promises of God are yes and amen. So, are you confidently anticipating the promises of God are yes and amen? Have you read the word of God that your hope is in those promises? If you are, then he says, for he shall be as a tree planted by the waters. Anybody ever seen a tree planted by the waters? You can have a tree by waters, and that's why they call oasis in the middle of the desert. And it'll be a place that's flourishing where they shouldn't flourish. And, that's what, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when the heat cometh, but her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful near the ground, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. You will constantly be producing fruit when you line your heart up with God's heart. Amen. Does that sound good to anybody? Amen. Now, this is going to be a key verse, and we're going to come back to it, but I'm going to go ahead and read it. And the first time I really started getting an understanding of this verse radically changed my life. The heart is deceitful above all things. Your fleshly, worldly heart, you cannot trust. You cannot rely on it. You can't, you can't depend on it. You can't discern with it. It will give you a spirit of suspicion. That's not a spirit of discernment. It will get you in trouble. And desperately wicked, who can know it? You can't depend on it. Well, how do I know it? Well, I can line it up with the Word of God and see where my heart is lining up with the Word. And anything that doesn't line up with the Word gets kicked into left field. And the more Word of God in I get in me, the more Spirit of God I get in me, the more I start running that rhythm of grace, the, 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 the more it'll line up. But you know what? You've got to be careful, or else you still might get into the wrong spirits, and you got to go back to last week's teaching, because it's all got to line up with the Word. I am the Lord. The, the Lord searches the heart. So it, God searches your heart. How many know you can lie to everybody else? You can even lie to yourself, but you can't lie to God. Amen. And He's going to search your heart, right? right? So I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways. If you don't like the fruit in your life, you need to start being real with yourself and change what you're sowing and stop following your heart and start following after God's heart. There I said it. Why are you preaching this way, Pastor? I want you to make me feel good. That's the point that I'm trying to get you to. I'm trying to get you so blessed that you're a walking, screaming billboard of the goodness of God. But anything less than living the way that God's called will not get you there. Yes. It will not. Everybody in here, if you've got a serious issue in your life, so there's somebody going to tell you, well, just follow your heart. It'll lead you to the right path. No, it won't. It, the Bible doesn't say it's going to lead you into destruction. It's going to get you killed and get you cursed. And God's searching your heart. And you're going to give to every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. I mean, all the fruit don't lie. Amen. Bible says you shall know them by their fruit. We're going to be talking about some other things the Bible doesn't say, and that's going to come into play. I mean, all the fruit don't lie. Do you know I still... 
Now listen, I, I, there have been times in my life I got religious and I examined my fruit too much. We're going to talk about that too when we get there. But uh, I still examine my fruit pretty much daily because how else am I going to know what to correct if I don't examine my own? And I'd rather examine my own fruit than have God come examine it. Come on. But why do we do it? He said, I'm going to bless you. He said, I'm going to put you like a tree planted by the rivers of living water where the Holy Ghost flows. Glory. Woo! You know, you get to be there where all the glory is coming out. It's like, that's a great thing, isn't it? Amen. When the rest of the world is going to hell in a handbasket, he says, I'll put you right in I'll make you an oasis, an oasis in the middle of the desert. That's a pretty good promise to decide I'm not going to follow my own heart anymore, isn't it? All right, next verse. I'm going to take a drink. Are we up on the screen? Can you all read it now? My little children. So he's talking to believers, right? Not talking to lost people. Not talking to wannabes. He's talking to believers. Let us not love in word. Oh, I'm praying for you, sweetheart. Have a good day. Now listen, prayer is powerful. But neither in tongue, but in deed and truth. How I many you know, you know, when, but if it doesn't cost you something, it's probably not really love, I'm just going to tell you. I'll move on from that. And hereby we know that we are of the truth, and so we learned last week the truth is the word of God. Jesus is the word. Which we need to study that so that we are the truth and shall assure our hearts before him. So how do you know? If for if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart. So who comes to condemn? Satan. Satan. Satan right? And knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence towards God. So if a heart isn't condemning us, if a heart is lined up with the Word of God, if we're running that rhythm of grace with God, then we have confidence towards God that He's going to do the promises that He called for us. If our heart isn't running in rhythm with God, if we're following after our own heart, it's going to condemn us and Satan's going to beat the snot out of you because he tricked you into following his path and he's going to beat you up for every stupid thing he talked you into. Y'all still with me? So if you follow your heart, you're going to lead to a place that your heart is condemned. If you follow in the, in, in the rhythm of grace and follow God, you're going to have confidence that God is going to help you through whatever that thing is the enemy is trying to beat you up with. Y'all still here? Who still wants to, anybody want to follow their heart yet? Next slide. Jeremiah 17, 9. This is, the, this is the meat for this one. If someone says, follow your heart, this verse should jump out in your spirit and it should go, red flashing line. The heart is deceitful above all things. Can you get much plainer than that? Well, how am I supposed to follow my, you know? And, and there was times when I was doing like, well, which heart do I follow? Well, the one that's lined up with God. My heart, I can't trust. Oh, well, I love them. You know, God, we don't even go there. And desperately wicked, who can know it? Proverbs chapter 4, verse 20. Proverbs 4, 20, and 27. And I'm just flying today. My son, attend to my words, incline thy ear unto my sayings. Uh, my words is the Bible, right? Incline thy ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from my eyes, keep them in the midst of thy heart. So where do you keep his word at? In your heart. For they are life unto those that find them and health to their flesh. You want to be healthy? You want to have life? Keep the Word of God in your heart. Keep thy heart with all diligence. You've heard me preach some message a little bit here recently, but you have a choice what goes in your heart. 
just God help me. No, you have a choice what you put in there. It's your choice what your heart follows. Come on, I'm preaching this morning. So you have to keep it with all dil diligence. Kind of means something called W O R K. You got to put in the work. I know that's a dirty four letter word today. But diligence, that means I'm guarding my heart. I'm only letting the Word of God in. Nothing else. I, I'm taking every thought captive and exalts itself above the mind of Christ. Because what goes in my head is going to eventually end up in my heart. And what's in my heart is going to end, come out of my mouth. And then the life and death is in the power of the tongue. My tongue controls my body. And I'm going to start making all kinds of stupid stuff happening when I could have just been diligent and guided and guarded my heart. Because right here it says, for out of it are the issues of life. I'm having troubles with this. Well, it's in your heart. I'm having trouble with this. Well, it started in your heart. He always says it's in my heart. Well, it's because the Bible says it's in your heart. I didn't, I didn't write it. I'm just reading it to you. Just quote it. Come on. Well, I'm dealing with this. Well, you let some stuff in your heart. You're following your heart. Follow the Lord's heart. Follow the Word of God. I don't know what the Word of God says. That's the first smart thing you said. Big smile. It means you got to go find out what the Word of God says on that subject then, right? right. Does everybody just wake up knowing all the Word? No. That's why you got to go find it. What, what does God's heart have to say about this subject that I'm dealing with? Right. Now I can start lining up with it. Now I'm diligently keeping my heart in tune with his heart so I can run with the rhythm of grace. Put away from me a forward mouth. That's in reverse lips. Man, don't be talking that nasty, dirty stuff. You know, I could go on and on. You can't turn on the TV. You can't go into a gas station. Uh, you can't go into a restaurant without hearing all of this. I can't change them, but I can change me. Come on. Let thy eyes look right on and let the islands look, look straight before thee. Keep your eyes on the Word of God. If they don't line up with it, don't be looking at it. Ponder the path of thy feet and let thy ways be established. You just didn't slip, trip, and fall into that mess. You walked there. Come on. So pay attention where you're going and make sure. All you got to do is make sure your heart is in unison with his heart. And you'll start running with that rhythms of grace. But if you follow your heart, you're going to run right into a path of destruction. Does that chapter, that book up there start, that I had earlier start making more sense now? Path of Destruction, chapter 1, verse 5. That's where following your heart gets you. Turn not to the right hand or to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. How many know the path is narrow? It's not wide. It's wide that it leads to destruction. But you've got to watch where you're walking and keep your heart lined up with the Word of God. Now, the enemy will always try to get you to count the cost. Because he doesn't want you to see the blessings right in front of you. Anybody hearing me this morning? Next slide. Oh, I can't do this. Well, that's another smart thing you said. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 and 18. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, if you've confessed Jesus Lord in your life and made him Lord and lined your life up with him, you're in Christ. Since he is a new creature, old things have passed away, behold, all things are become new. You have a new heart. Quit trying to act, quit trying to follow the old one. We'll say it again. You have a new heart. 
Quit letting the devil deceive you and quit trying to follow the old. Amen. That either that guy's all dead or none dead. Don't be a Frankenstein. He has no power over you. He can only trick you into opening those doors. Come on, are you hearing me? Yeah. So you're a new creature. Behold, all things become new. All things are of God who has reconciled us by Jesus Christ and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. So you're a new creature. You have a new heart. And that heart is capable of lining up with the Word of God as you learn if you follow the old heart, how did, what's my new heart do? My new heart wants to, should want to follow after God. But my flesh, I, we don't, we're going to be in this flesh suit until the day He calls us home. And we can follow after our fleshly heart anytime we want. And following our heart is going to get us in trouble. The same way just following the Spirit without checking it with the Word of God is going to get us in trouble. Amen? Amen. Next slide. Now we're going to get into some little other. Luke 12, 34. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. You want me, you want me, you want to see what's really in your heart? Look and see where all your treasure is, where you put all your time, where you've invested it at. What you've spent your life doing. That's your treasure. You want to see what your heart's been following? Just take a tally. I know it's strong preaching. Is it wrong to have material things? No. But God gave you material things for His glory, not yours. So I'm not preaching against material things. But I am saying, where your heart is, says follow not your heart. Where's my heart at? Well, where's your treasure at? Next slide. I can see everybody's really excited about this. Matthew 15, 17 and 20. Do not ye yet understand that whatsoever entereth at the mouth goeth into the belly and is cast out into the drop. But those things which proceeded out the mouth cometh from the heart. Now they're here beating them up because they're eating stuff they're not supposed to be eating. They're saying it's a, it's a sin to eat that. And Jesus is like, I, I'm more worried about the, the scriptures talking about here is more worried about what's in the heart than what's going in your belly. <laughs> so, but those things which proceed out of the mouth cometh from the heart and they defile the man. So you want to listen, know what someone believes and what's in their heart? Just sit around and let them talk for a while. It'll come out eventually. Right? So, for out of the heart proceedeth what? If you follow your heart, it's going to lead you to evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness, and blasphemy. Well, I'm not a thief and I don't sleep around. Well, okay, you've knocked uh, two, out of, two out of six, so I'm sure you can find something in there that's led you astray pretty soon when you followed your heart. Well, I, I didn't sleep around well. Matthew 5 20 says, You look upon a woman lust after your heart, and that goes, Man, what are You've already committed adultery. So, you know, I think that knocked out that one out. If I turned the TV on and fell for that one, I'm just following my heart. The key is to make sure. You're not following the wrong heart and you're lining your heart up with the Lord and His Word. Remember we started with all the blessings of God. Well, I don't see them in my life today because most people are following after their heart and not following after the Lord's heart. Anybody hear me this morning? Amen. These are the things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands defileth not a man. Although it's a smart thing to wash your hands. And God told us that at the back of the Bible before we even knew anything about science. He said, wash your hands and wash your dishes. He was a pretty smart fellow, you know. He is God. But, uh, you know, it's what comes out of your heart that defiles you. So, 
Can you see that following your heart's going to lead you to mess? Is anybody getting that driven? I, I still got more. I'm, I'm, I promise you when I get done today, you'll have no question about when someone says follow your heart, I pray it jumps up in you. Next verse. This one here is the one whenever the people start talking about following their heart, they always quote this verse, but it always amazes me they only quote the first half. Psalms 37, verses 4 through 5. Delight thyself also in the Lord. Now wait a minute. If I'm delighting in the Lord, then I'm grabbing hold of the fringes of garments. I'm following the Lord. I'm following after His heart. I'm running in that rhythm of grace. And my heart is lined up with His. That's what it means to delight in the Lord, right? Then why does everybody go, and, and He shall give thee the desires of thy heart. You know, and I've heard people say, and he will you sometimes. You desire something enough, he'll give it to you just to make sure to see how stupid you were. But uh, it's not always a good thing. You can get things you're not supposed to have. That's why he gave you free will. But if you delight yourself in the Lord, God doesn't give junk and he doesn't give things that are painful. Come on, are you hearing me this morning? So, the next time some of them, we're not even to the other part of the verse yet. But even the first half, you know, God gives me the desires of my heart. Yeah. When you're delighting in Him, when you're running in those rhythms of grace with Him, and then it goes on to say, commit thy way unto the Lord. Commit thy way unto the Lord. But I'm following my heart and He's giving me the desires of my heart, Pastor. He knows what I want. <laughs> yeah, He also knows what you need. Come on, are you here? So, how do you commit that way into the Lord? You line up with the Word of God. You've committed your life to Him to follow after Him. And said, trust also in Him and He shall bring it to pass. How many know there's promises in God that He promised to bring to pass? How many know He wants to make you a walking billboard of the goodness of God, physically, spiritually, emotionally, and financially? But you have to delight yourself in the Lord. You have to commit your life to Him. And yeah, He'll give you desires of your heart. You know, there's things that He's blessed me with within the last decade that as a naive young minister I prayed for that I realized how ridiculous they were and didn't want them no more and just chased after God and after I didn't want and then after 20 years later he'd just be like here I want you to have this now it's just like a little cherry on the top I'm like okay great but but here's the thing those things don't have any control over me if he told me to give it away tomorrow I'd say here you go be blessed and people think could you really yeah because it's not mine. My heart's just my heart's in sync with his heart. And that's what his heart's want. That's what's going to make me happy. Yes. Do you see what I'm saying? So you got to trust in him, right? Do you think it, it starts off just, I'm following you, Lord? No, you're going to have to test him and see, right? Line up with the Lord. Next verse. Oh man, time's getting away. I had such hope. I thought this different style of preaching I could. Proverbs 28, 26. In case there was any doubt, I'm just going to spell it out. Can y'all see it up there yet? I'll let y'all read it so you're offended with that verse instead of me. I'm just spelling it out. Everybody got it yet? He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. I didn't call you a fool. The Bible did. So who wants... Does anybody here want to be a fool? Does anybody like go... Oh, you know, I've, been, I've played the fool. I've... I've been played a fool, but I don't remember ever signing up just so I want to permanently be one. So, trust it in his own heart. So when you're following your own heart, 
The Bible plain says you're going to be a fool. But whoso walketh wisely shall be delivered. That means whatever slippery, snaky thing the devil has for you, if you follow, if you line up your heart with God's heart and you run that rhythm of grace, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, you're going to be delivered out of everything the enemy throws at you. You're going to fall. He's going to leave. You know, uh, years ago, the guy spoke something prophetic to me. He's brought it to your remembrance. You're going to be dancing through the minefields of the enemy. And in these last days, that's what we got to do. But we got to be able to dance with it, you know, right through that stuff. And that's by following God's heart. You know, he sees stuff that you don't see. You know, that's how most of minds are. They're buried in the ground for you not to see. You don't know you, you're in trouble until you done stepped on it. That's usually what happens when you follow your own heart. Next slide. I got a bunch, huh? Luke chapter 6, verse 45. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringing forth that which is good. I mean, that just seems kind of... I mean, do we need a scripture for that? Obviously. So, when you're lined up with the Word of God, you're going to bring good treasure. I mean, okay, in case you didn't know, the Bible says God put His greatest treasure in this earth and vessel. The thing He thought was the greatest, He put inside you and me to bring forth fruit upon this earth. And He wants you to bring forth good treasure. He didn't just put it in there for you to hold on to it. He put it in there so you can make something out of it. But you're only going to do that when you're running in rhythm with His grace, following His heart, not your own. Bring forth that which is good and evil, man, out of the evil treasure of heart, bring forth that which is evil. So, and just for the record, most evil men don't really know they're evil, they don't think they're evil. But how do you know? For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. What are they saying? What are they confessing? What matters to them? You know, a lot of people, they get around me, I don't do it on purpose. All he does is talk about the Bible. Well, that's what's in there. That's, what my, that's who I'm supposed to be, spending my time in prayer and word and study. What else do you think is going to come out? I think you'd be happy that we're not talking about boxing or something. I don't know. I mean, nothing wrong with boxing. I just don't have time for it. I mean, it takes all my time just to keep up with my studies. So what treasure's in your heart? What's your heart been following? Hopefully the good stuff. But if you're like me, it's like anybody, you can always use some honing. Use some sharpening. Get a little more in sync with that rhythm of grace. So you can get it down. Ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum. Matthew 5 8, next slide. Blessed are the pure in heart. Can you be pure in your own strength? No, but if you learn to run in that rhythm of grace and follow after His heart, line your life up with the Word of God, it says, for they shall see God in the future to come and here and now. <clears throat> Not physically see them, but you will see them through the anointing. You'll feel His presence. You'll feel the glory of God. Does that sound good? Amen. Yeah? Does anybody want to go back to just following your heart. I promise you after today's message, the next time you hear somebody say that, your spirit man is going to cringe inside. When you hear someone say, oh, just follow your heart, honey. Shut up! What are you doing? Your doors ain't down. Yeah. Next slide. Romans 5, 5. I got seven minutes. And hope maketh not a shame, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. But I can't do it. Well, 
by the Holy Ghost, His love was shed abroad in your heart. You got filled. You got the love of God in your heart. If you follow Him, He will turn your heart to His heart and make your heart act like His heart. So, yes, you can. <laughs> Next slide. We are back to the beginning. That was. Look at that. Seven minutes left. I know I'm teaching different during this series, but uh, I pray you got something out of it. Yeah. How many in here is it something you've heard a lot of? Follow your heart. Do you think those people meant you ill and were trying to curse you? I don't. But how many know that that's what they were leading you to do now? We can see by the Word of God that nowhere in the Bible does it say just follow your heart. Matter of fact, it says it calls you a fool if you do that. We should always follow the Word of God. 